We're going to be talking about the John Boehner resignation. Patrick McBurney is uh, a local attorney here. He's also very involved in the Republican Party. And, you know, Patrick, uh, to a lot of people, uh, this was not a surprise at all. I mean, it really kind of been building up to, to this for, mm, I don't know, the last uh, 18 months at least. What the surprise is, is that uh, the speaker, I think, did the right thing and, and decided not to get Democratic support to retain his speakership. And, uh, and um, I think that there were some people who thought that that's what would happen, is that he would have to rely on Democratic votes to maintain the position. So um, I, I, I think that that was the wise decision on his part. And, um, and I think it's time for, for a new leadership and a new direction in the Congress. Well, you know, folks in Congress, um, in the House, had an opportunity to make a change last time around, and they chose not to. Well, that's an interesting, interesting uh, process, because the real process occurred um, before January of uh, 2015. It actually, after the election, there was a meeting in November where a lot of the new electeds came, and, and there was... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, informal is not the exact right word, but it's more informal than actual session of Congress where they went into caucus and they decided who the leadership was going to be. That was the time if there was going to be any sort of revolt for it to occur. Then mm -hmm. there was a big push on talk radio, you know, well, you know, Ted Yoho and some other people want to, you know, uh, aren't going to support Speaker Boehner if we can get enough people to uh, not agree, then, you know, then, then we can get somebody else to, to run for Speaker. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that if, if you're Congressman Jamie Herb Butler, or you know, you're Dan Newhouse, or you know, any one of the other Republican Congressmen, Kathy McMorris Rogers, you know, and, and you've already made a commitment, you know, and they've already made a decision, you're not going to change that decision, especially when um, you have a duty to your constituents to try to um, do things for them to make sure that especially in this area, that the funding continues to come to Hanford. And you don't want to weaken your position by, by bucking the leadership at that particular point after the decision has already been made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, the, but that, that said, uh, the fact that they actually went and took that vote and that there were a number of dissenting votes uh, indicated that there was a problem and that, uh, that there's, been, there's deep dissatisfaction with, uh, with the leadership in the House as there is, I think, nationally dissatisfaction with McConnell's stewardship of the Senate. And I think that that stems to some degree from the fact that um, the leadership is so adverse to shutting down the government um, that they will pretty much, you know, all the Obama administration has to do is say, well, we don't agree, we're going to veto that. So they don't even go to the trouble to actually pass the bill to send it to the president's desk to actually make the president go through with the process of vetoing the, the yeah, bill. Yeah, well, I think the House is, has passed a lot of those bills, which folks in the House will tell you repeatedly that they have. So while well, they I, haven't gone to the Senate, the Senate hasn't done any action. The House has done a lot of action. That's true. passed a lot of bills. That's true. Um, but, you know, uh, it's the House and Senate that people are frustrated with, not just John Boehner. Yeah. I want to remind people of our phone number in case you want to call and join our conversation. Love to hear what you have to think. That phone number, 547-8726. So you're very, very supportive of John Boehner deciding that October 30th will be his last day in the U.S. Congress. I am supportive of that. Yeah. And I've met John Boehner. He's a nice guy. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, he was in... Uh, Congressman Hastings were very close friends, and uh, John came out to campaign for Hastings, and I met him at an event. Uh, I don't think he's a dishonorable person. I, I, I just think that, you know, the, the leadership of the Congress presently, they're so adverse to this idea of a government shutdown that, that there is an element within the conservative caucus that wants to say, we want to make a political point. Mm -hmm. to the president, and we want to basically, um, you know, say, you know, either either it is on the issue of spending, either, you know, on this Planned Parenthood issue, um, e either, on, uh, either on the issue of immigration especially, especially in light of the fact that there's a perception, you know, um, that the administration has decided not to enforce the immigration laws that are on the books, 
and as a result of that, people don't feel that we're that, that we're doing anything about the mm -hmm. borders, and the mm -hmm. borders are practically open. And there hasn't been any, any mean, but, meaningful. But we've had we've had less um, illegal immigration movement into this country uh, in the past several years than we have in a long time. And and there may be reasons for that, and I don't pro profess to be an expert about that. Yeah. One of those is that maybe you know economically things have weren't as good as they were. You know, ten years ago. But uh, that, that being beside it, yeah. being that beside the point, there is just this perception, you know, that our borders are completely open and there's no enforcement. And, and I'll, okay, I'll, I'll come out of the Republican closet a little bit. I used to be very in favor of a strong immigration reform. I believe that people should have uh, a path to legalization, legal status. Uh, I don't believe it's good for the country to have people sitting in the shadows. But after this whole situation with the um, the Central American children coming over the border and, and there not being any um, way to prevent that, I, I feel like we need to have some very, we need to have a fence, we need to have a secure border, we need to know who comes in and out of the United States. Okay, all right. Okay, Patrick McBurney, so uh, let me pose the same question to you in terms of what changes do you think are going to occur with a new person in that spot? Well, I, I think the congressman's right. I mean, you know, um, the administration has not been particularly amenable to compromise uh, on some of these issues. Uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see a lot of changes, but you may see some more symbolic uh, uh, kinds of things occur, and you may see a brief government shutdown, and you may see, you may see some reconciliation type uh, spending bills that the Senate can pass by a majority vote rather than having to have the uh, two-thirds that, well, whatever, the, the 60 vote uh, filibuster proof, uh, wow, that was really unartful, um, yeah. but I think you know what I meant. <laughs> Um, yes. The, the, a lot of times, because the, the because of the filibuster rules in the Senate, the the minority can block anything you, unless you have sixty votes, unless it's yeah, a financial reconciliation mm -hmm. bill. So um, you, you may see something come past the president's desk, um, but I think I think Doc's right. We're getting into the presidential election cycle as two thousand sixteen ramps up. Congress is going to there's going to be a lot of pressure on. The people who are very conservative to, you know, kind of sit back and keep their powder dry until we see what the results of the election are. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the biggest uh, check off that I make when I make a decision about who I'm going to vote for is based on whether or not that person has publicly said that they are willing to compromise. And if they are not willing to compromise, then I don't consider them. Because just having your opinion in your little section. Uh, it does nothing. It does nothing. Compromise. It's the new. It's the new. What would that be? Well, I think that that you know my most admired political leader, you know, of the 20th century is Winston Churchill, and Winston Churchill had really only a very few number of very core things that he wouldn't necessarily compromise on, and and basically I think one of the great quotes that he said was. Well, you know, if I had to ally myself with the devil to beat the Nazis, I would sit, find something positive to say about him on the floor yes, of the Commons. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so um, ultimately, sometimes you 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 have to have you have to have core beliefs. You have to have certain things that you believe very strongly and that you won't yes. compromise on. But you yes. can't make that about everything. Yeah. And so and so basically, I think the congressman is right. I think. The leadership issue comes back to the White House, and I think that there is a certain inflexibility uh, when it comes to this particular president. You know, a lot of times I think it's his way or the highway. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a break here. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you, Patrick. Stay with us. Patrick McBurney is in the studio with us right now. He's a local attorney, also been very involved in the Republican Party, and I know he was telling me he wanted to promote an activity that's tomorrow morning. Go ahead, go well, ahead. Thank you. As yeah. the president of the Republican Club, we're having our monthly breakfast, and tomorrow morning we're going to have Representative Matt Manweller, PhD, who's a professor at Central Washington University. Um, he um, he's going to talk about the role of the Supreme Court in Washington politics, and I think that's especially relevant in light of the McCleary decision. 
And so um, that's at 8 o'clock at the Country Gentleman Event Center. If anyone would like to come, we'd like to have you join us for breakfast. It should be an informative program. All right, tell us, you know, because i got to show up there with money in my pocket. If I come tomorrow, this will be the second one that, uh, that I've attended. The first one was last time around with uh, Congressman Newhouse. And so I appreciate it because people can, you know, write down questions and get some answers to their questions. So anyway, back to the how much does it cost? Um, if you're not a member of the club, it costs $50 to join the club for a year. And then if you're not a member of the club, breakfast is $25. If you are a member of the club, breakfast is $15. All right. And so this is basically a social club to be able to interact with other Republicans and also have a chance to be face-to-face -face with elected officials? Right. Yeah. So, so far we've had Dina Rossi, Congressman Newhouse, and this month we'll be Matt Manuel, and next month we're going to have... Uh, Bill Bryant, who is uh, the current uh, GOP candidate for governor, and he's just been endorsed by Slate Gordon and Dan Evans, which tells me that Dave Reichert, who uh, is a congressman in the 8th District, is not going to get in the race. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Uh, back to John Boehner here for uh, a little bit of time. Um, if you had your druthers, if you were king for a day and got to pick who would be the next Speaker of the House, I'm curious, Patrick, who would you pick? Wow. Wow. Um, Hmm. You know, I uh, I should have thought about that before I came over. Uh, you know, I think what, if I had my druthers could be king for the day, I think I'd like to pick that somebody who's not in Congress. Not necessarily a non-politician, but... Um, Maybe like a former statesman? Yeah, former statesman. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Hmm. That's, that's what I would like to do. Obviously someone, you know, being me, someone who's conservative, someone who's a Republican. Yes, but, of course. Um, you know, someone who someone who might be able to fill the job temporarily until we get to a new election. I think that would be, that would be a very good idea. Hmm. Wow, you better pass that on. I, I'm I'm kind of liking that idea too, and I thank the caller who made that suggestion. All right. Well, today's been a very busy day. There's a lot of news that is breaking. That is for certain. I've enjoyed our conversations today. Why don't we have some more coming up on Monday? See you then at noon.